Hey guys, in this video series, we'll be looking at AI and Abel, and in this video, I'm going to familiarize you with the concept of dexterous algorithm. Remember being lost and using a navigation system to pick the fastest route through town? It probably makes you wonder how these navigation systems so efficiently select paths for you to travel. Well, this is with the help of shortest pathfinding algorithms, or pathfinding algorithms in general. So, let's look at how these algorithms actually work. So in A-levels, we have two shortest pathfinding algorithms. The first is Digistrous algorithm, and the second is A-star algorithm. A-star algorithm is told to be the better one and, or the smarter one because it takes direction of movement into consideration. So every direction you move to can have a particular cost, which we will calculate when we calculate the final cost of moving at that path. So with Digistrous algorithm, we are given the starting place or the starting node which is A in this case, the distance between the nodes and the ending place, or sometimes we are not given the ending place and are asked to find the shortest path from a particular node to all the other nodes. So we're given A, B, C, D, E, and F. These are called as vertices. And the distance between the nodes are called as edges. So each edge might have a different distance from each other. So A to B, edge the edge from a to b has a distance of 5 a to c is 6 and so on and so so in this case we'll be solving for the shortest distance and path from a to f so what we would first do is write down all the nodes as i've shown below and the values so except for a because we're starting at that node we put down the values for all the other nodes as infinity because it takes you zero units to reach the place you already are. So if I'm already at A, it'll take me zero minutes or I'll have to travel zero kilometers to reach there because I'm already there. And all the other nodes for this moment, we'll assign them a value of infinity because we haven't yet calculated the, the shortest part to that particular node. Our next step would be basically going node to node, finding the shortest distance between them and updating their values constantly. A simple logical explanation of this is if the new distance is less than the old distance then update that value or else skip on updating it and just keep moving ahead so first i'm going to select b and c because they are directly connected to a and we can pretty much by looking at them say that the shortest distance from a to b would be five and the shortest distance from a to c would be six so what we do is we remove the value of infinity from b and we're going to update that value to five because that's the shortest path as we just discussed. And we do the same for C and put it down as six. Now, since all the nodes attached directly to A have been updated, let's add A to a list, which we'll be calling the list of processed nodes. So as you can see, I've put down A as processed. To decide what to update next, we select the node with the least value, which in between B and C is B, and update all the nodes that are directly connected to it. So the nodes that are directly connected to B would be A, D, and F. But since A is already processed, we don't look at that node. Let's look at D and F. To go to D, we would first have to take the path from A to B and then B to D. So in this case, that would be five and then plus seven. So we erase the infinity sign that is under D and update that value to 12, five plus seven. All right, now let's look at F, the shortest path from A to F. Right now, what we know would be A to B and then B to F. So that would be 5 plus 3, which is 8, which we've jotted down. All right, now let's move on to the next step. Here we put down B in the list of processed nodes because we've updated all the nodes that are directly connected to B, and which means we can classify it as processed. All right, so if you look at the nodes and values table right now, we can see that C has the lowest value between the unprocessed nodes because A and B are already processed. So moving on to the next unprocessed node, we go to C and C is directly connected to E. So we'll be updating E. 
So going from A to E would be 6 plus 4 which is 10. So let's put that value down as 10 and put C in the list of process nodes. So at this point, it's probably evident to you and that's good that we've already found our shortest path from A to F. But for the sake of this example, let's keep on moving. Let's select the next value from the unprocessed nodes, which has the least value. So that would be F. Let's update all the nodes that are connected to F. So that would be B, D and E. What we see is that B is already in the list of process nodes. So we don't really need to update it. Um, next we have D. So if we take the path from A, B and then B to F and then F to D, it will become 8 plus 4 which is 12. And 12 is already the same value as we have right now. So paths A, B, D and A, B, F, D have the same value. So it's no use updating this value. Now, if you take the path from A, B and B to F and then F to E, that would give us 5 plus 3, 8 plus 7, 15. The value we currently have for E is 10. So this value is smaller value than what we are currently calculating. So we won't update the value of E as we already have the smallest value right now. We can now add F to our list of process nodes when this happens and when we have added our final node to a list of process nodes. This means that we have already completed the whole process and we have found the shortest path from A to F and this has a value of 8. So there are some things that you should note with this algorithm that it only gives you the shortest time or distance. Uh, using the method that we currently used. If we want to keep track of the path as well, we have to write down which node we previously visited when we happen to update a value. So only when you update a value, write down which was the last node that you visited before you visited the node that you are currently updating. I will show this in a past paper question. And one more important thing is that this algorithm in any case most cases doesn't work with negative values. I hope this has cleared the topic for you. If not, that's not really a big problem because I'll be explaining the whole process sorts of again uh, with a question, a proper past paper question in the next video, which you can watch over here. All right, see you next time.